Welcome back to the next installment in my record collection. This will be the seventh edition. Uh, this time we're diving a little bit more into the 70s prog related items. These aren't like specifically prog albums, but these are albums that have been produced within 70s bands. They're also a little bit of a catch-all for a lot of artists that I haven't really showcased yet. The last one is those albums that didn't find a place anywhere else in my catalog. So I want to actually work my way backwards in this one, just the way that it's progressed. And backwards in the sense that for all of my albums thus far, it's always been chronological order from earliest to latest. And because I'm working this cubby backwards, I'm going to go from their latest release back to their more earliest. And starting us all off this time, we have ELO, or more specifically, this one is Jeff Lynne's ELO with Alone in the Universe. From there, we have Time from ELO. I love, actually, I'm going to move myself a little bit over here, like I have with all the other ones. Uh, Time from ELO. I love how this album starts off. The rest of it is a little bit on the shaky side, not a huge fan of the rest of the material on this album. Then, sheer indulgence on my part, we have the soundtrack to Xanadu, Electric Orchestra with uh, Olivia Newton-John. Uh, how can you not love a roller skate musical? And then finally we have Discography. Uh, the last song on this album holds one of the band's more successful tracks with Don't Bring Me Down. Um, and I just blast that song whenever it comes on. Then we have their more popular album of Out of the Blue, the double album that they have, which holds Mr. Blue Sky, their, more, their most successful album. Then we have my second favorite album from them, which is a New World Record. I love Telephone Line, but actually it's a mission, the world record, that I just can't help but love. And then we have my absolute favorite album from the band, El Dorado, this guy. It just blows me away, and it's one of my favorite concept albums, too. And then we go into Sticks. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the record. This is just the, the sleeve. Uh, it must have been lost along the way. Uh, this is uh, Paradise. Um, uh, Paradise Theater. Um, I just... I keep it in here just because I love the album work. And I find Sticks is very related to Kansas. Uh, this is my favorite album from them, of uh, Left Overture. I love Magna Opus, and it, of course it starts off with Carry On My Wayward Son, their more accessible song. Then we go into Super Tramp, and I start us all off with their live album from Paris. Holds all of my favorite songs from them, and definitely a must if you're a Super Tramp fan. Then we go into Even in the Quietest Moments. The Fool's Overture is just breathtaking. Uh, then I have two copies of Crisis What Crisis because again no album in this one. I want to frame this which is why I kept it uh, and then I actually have the album in this one. And then we have my favorite album from Super Tramp Crime of the Century. This guy shaped who I am. Hide in your shell, uh, Asylum, of course you also have School and um, the final song Crime of the Century. So so good. Then I go into Proko Harem with A Salty Dog. I also have The Shine On Brightly. This was one of the first records that had one song on the side. Like it was just the side was just one song and I really like that. And a uh, natural progression is uh, Inagaya De Vida from Iron Butterfly. Uh, Iron Butterfly and Inagaya De Vida, again, one song, one album side. Uh, I don't really listen to the, the first side, I mainly just stick to the second side. Now I know somebody was asking about the Moody Blues in my past album uh, recap. And so here they are. Uh, we have a question of balance. Then we have the seventh sojourn. Uh, we go to the Moody Blues, the long distance voyager. We have our children, to our children's children's children. Uh, Crazy, crazy album. But the one that holds the very special uh, place in my heart is The Days of Future Past. Just The Night of White Satin is just so good. So from there, we're going to jump around quite a bit. So hold on to your hats. We've got Arlo Guthrie's A Alice's Restaurant. I love just the whole side of Alice's Restaurant. I love the story. I get a kick out of it every time. Then I just have the record of the captain and me from the Doobie Brothers. I keep it in this sleeve. Uh, then I have Frampton Comes Alive, which of course is a must if you have any kind of records. Then I have Journeys of Departure. 
I don't, I haven't actually heard this. It's just an album that I inherited from my uncle. I guess I should preface, most of these albums from this point on are albums that I've inherited from my uncle. Uh, for example, I have never heard this album, so I have no idea what it even sounds like. Uh, then we have Crosby, Steels, Nash, and Young. Uh, then I have the Steve Miller Band Live. Then I have Hotel California without its jewel or its container. I just have the sleeve. Uh, this album is from my mom of Burton Cummings. Then we have a uh, kind of another super group as Asia, but this one is UK. It's got John Wetton and Bill Bruford, which I really, really enjoy. Uh, much like um, Asia, they're, it's in the poppy stream, but it's a little bit less poppy. Um, just with uh, In the Dead of Night being kind of its own little thing. Uh, anyway, very interesting. Uh, then we have Heart of Bad Animals. Then we go into the Alan Parsons Project, and uh, again, this is my mom's album of Eve. Then we have my favorite album from him, which is The Tales of Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, I have a lot more Alan Parsons Projects I inherited from a friend that's over in that one, and I'll get to that when I do. Uh, then I have some albums that, again, I inherited from my uncle, and the first being U2 with Joshua Tree. They recently redid this album. Then we have War Child. I believe this is War Child. Either that or it's just War. Uh, it's got like the Sunday Bloody Sunday on it. Again, not a big fan of U2, but I'm not going to say no to their records. Then I have Chris DeBert, which is Best Move. It's kind of like one of his best of. Uh, it's got um, some of my favorite songs on here, like The Crusader, The Spanish Train. Uh, does it have Patricia, though? It does. It has Patricia the Stripper, which is a must-have. Uh, then we go into my Vangelis collection of Chariots of Fire brilliant brilliant soundtrack and i love how just atmospheric the first song is and side two is just fantastic then we have don't know how to pronounce that boy anyway this guy right here then speaking of atmospheric kind of songs we have tangerine dream uh this one is fandora anyway this guy right here uh, then we're getting into some crazier stuff with, um, I want to say this is Robert Margleff and Malcolm Cecil. Um, I think my uncle got this just for the album artwork because he was probably tripping on some kind of thing. Then we go into some Moog with the first Moog Quartet with the uh, Jefferson Kingsley. Anyway, this guy right here. A lot of fun. Then we get right into some kraut rock with Grob Schnitt. Uh, I love the album artwork on this. Very Roger Dean. I believe that's Roger Dean. Uh, and then we have Nectar. This one is just insane. Uh, and then we have like a compilation of kraut rock. And then we have Spotlight of the Moog. This is another kind of compilation album. And we have Kraftwerk's Autobahn. Uh, my uncle likes to cut, so there's more cutting here. And jumping right from Krautrock all the way to Australia, we have Midnight Oil with The Beds Are Burning. Or I believe this one is Diesel and Dust. It has kind of their one-hit wonder of Beds Are Burning. Uh, then I have another Babe Ruth album. Uh, this one is much more country and western than the other Babe Ruth album that I have. And then this one I got purely for the artwork, which is uh, Season 2. Uh, it's... Not what I expected, but still a very interesting album. Then I have some more soundtracks I inherited. A soundtrack to M.A.S.H., the soundtrack to Apocalypse Now, which has a lot of the spoken words on it, and what they do with the Doors' song, The End, is just... I believe it's The End. Uh, it's just a mind trip from start to finish. And then, of course, my mom's album of Dirty Dancing. <laughs> hey, I swear, it's my mom's. Bringing up the rear, we have my classical collection as well as my Christmas collection. I keep this at the end, um, and so the first up is Santa Claus is Canadian, because I'm Canadian and it's true. Uh, then we have Julie Andrews, Volume 5, Sings Christmas Carols, because she is a dream. Uh, then I have Country Christmas, with a whole lot of country and western singers. This is just hilarious. It's got Roy Rogers and Buck Owens and... Uh, come on, if it's Buck Owens and his buckaroos, you know it's going to be hilarious. Uh, then I've got Christmas Memories, uh, White Christmas with uh, Dennis Day and the orchestra. 
Uh, and I've got humor music in 18th century from Mozart and all of them. Uh, I got all of these guys actually at a dollar store for like a buck for a pound. So of course I'm going to load up on all the hilarious ones. From there we have some more contemporary stuff, or at least contemporary when they came out. Uh, Mariah Carey's album. Uh, then we've got the Charlie Brown's Christmas uh, soundtrack. We've got Trans-Siberian Orchestra of the Ghosts of Christmas Eve. It's more of like a best of, because not all the songs from Ghosts of Christmas Eve are on here. Uh, and then No Ordinary Child, and this one goes straight into the classical stuff that I have. Uh, and the first one is Images for Orchestras by Dubessy. Then I have two renditions of Peter and the Wolf. I have Peter of the Wolf. Looks like it's just like a whole bunch of random individuals on this one. Uh, then I have the New York Philharmonic of Peter and the Wolf. Um, but what I really like is their rendition of the Nutcracker, which is on the other side. Then I've got Tchaikovsky's Ballet of the Nutcracker Suite, Sleep, uh, Swan Lake, and Sleeping Beauty. It's kind of a best of, and it was only like four bucks. Then I have Beethoven's Piano Concerto number three. I have the Fifth Symphony, which is always a fun one. And then I have Mozart's Complete Music for Pianos and Strings. And finally, rounding this all off is Beethoven's Eighth and Ninth Symphony. So that's about it for my musical collection for that cubby. What did you guys think? I've got one more that I'm going to do, and that's going to be the random stuff that I have. And that includes box sets. That includes uh, the things I have behind here. Uh, I have one more cubby down here, but it's all albums that I inherited from my mom, dad. It's all alphabetical, and it's all kind of popular 70s and 80s stuff, and it's stuff I don't really listen to. So it's there just to kind of keep space. I'll probably give them back to my parents at one day, but for the time being, they're here. Uh, so that's about it. What album did you like the most? What album did you find most surprising? Let me know by commenting down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are always the best. And until next time, notes out.